Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yonit Arthur. I'm an audiologist and strength coach and I specialize in vestibular disorders. Welcome to my channel, The Steady Coach. Today we're going to be talking about the use of psychedelic assisted therapy for the treatment of chronic disorders like chronic pain and chronic dizziness. I wanna start by saying that as of right now in 2022, there is no research on chronic dizziness treatment with psychedelic assisted therapy. However, there are ongoing trials right now for the treatment of related conditions like chronic pain, anxiety, and depression. So let's dive into why this is such an interesting topic and why I think that this deserves more research specifically for chronic dizziness. Psychedelics are a class of drugs or medicines that alter the perception and consciousness of the person who takes them. Psychedelic drugs that you may have heard of include things like LSD, psilocybin or magic mushrooms, mescaline, ayahuasca, DMT, and a related compound called MDMA. There's been a recent surge in interest in these compounds for the treatment of all sorts of conditions, including PTSD, anxiety, depression, pain, and addiction. So let's talk about why it seems that psychedelic assisted therapy would be a useful way to treat chronic pain and chronic dizziness. First of all, there are quite a few studies at this point that point to the use of psychedelic assisted therapy for helping people with anxiety. Now, anxiety isn't exactly chronic pain or chronic dizziness, but anxiety often accompanies these two conditions. With my own clients, I have found that the anxiety about the chronic dizziness symptoms tends to be a tremendous factor that prevents people from getting better. This preoccupation or rumination about the symptoms, when it starts to go down, the dizziness is able to go down as well. So even if psychedelic assisted therapy were used to treat the anxiety associated with chronic pain and chronic dizziness, that would be a wonderful step forward. And in fact, a research group that is currently studying chronic pain and psychedelic assisted therapy out of Canada found through a recent research review that people who were given psychedelic assisted therapy for PTSD, so not even specifically for chronic pain, but for the depression, anxiety, and distress coming from PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder, those folks also had a corresponding decrease in chronic pain symptoms even though it wasn't specifically being treated. So let's dive into some of the science behind why this might be the case and why this is incredibly encouraging for future prospects on potentially treating chronic dizziness symptoms with similar protocols. So current thinking on psychedelics and why they produce the effects they do indicates that most likely psychedelics are having an impact on a network in the brain called the default default mode network. The activity in this network typically goes up when your attention goes down. In other words, if you're working really hard on something or you would have to really think about what you're doing, you're concentrating on something, this network is not very active. It's kind of your idling network. In other words, when you don't have something that you're really focusing on, activity in this network goes up. And this network is typically thought of as being involved in what we call metacognition. So in other words, when we're in our own heads and kind of thinking about our own self or our own state. So things like self-reflection, moral reasoning, your theory of mind, in other words, I am thinking about myself, I have my own thoughts, trying to figure out what your mental states are attributed to. So in other words, why do I feel this way or why am I thinking this way about whatever's happened recently? So notice that all of these actions that I just mentioned are kind of the precursors to things like rumination when we're obsessively thinking about something. And indeed, it's theorized that things like depression and anxiety are actually the result of overactivity in this network. When we're just relentlessly over and over thinking or introspecting about ourselves or in anxiety, 
relentlessly going over and over potential events in the future. So beyond these activities, the default mode network is also involved in two other major activities. One of those is inhibiting emotional and memory centers. And the second is that it helps filter sensory information. So when the default mode network is activated, we're more likely to be unable to integrate or access emotional memories. And it has strict control over the information that's making it in or is being integrated from our senses. As we've talked about before, the brain is a prediction machine. It doesn't just respond to information coming in from the outside, it predicts it and then uses just enough information from the senses to see if the guess was right. So in other words, sensory experiences, like what you see in your environment or your sense of balance, those are the brain's opinions and they're supported by sensory information. So the templates that your brain uses to predict information that's coming in and compare to your senses is pretty firmly wired in and it's based on your past experiences. Now, of course, it's always being updated, but the point here is that the default mode network helps exercise this tight control and keep those circuits in line. In other words, if you put all this together, it is very possible that this default mode network is part of why it's so hard to undo neural circuits that are involved with something like dizziness. And we've talked about this in previous videos, but typically your balance system requires inputs from three senses and it has to perfectly balance the sensory information coming in with its predictions. If those prediction templates or stencils, as I've described them in some other videos, are wrong and the default mode network is keeping them locked in, it's gonna be a lot harder to get them to change. And changing them is exactly what we want to do to help you stop your chronic dizziness symptoms. So when someone takes a psychedelic medicine, what happens is that the default mode network is somewhat taken offline. And this makes sense because in many cases, people who are taking psychedelic medicines will experience hallucinations, which essentially are what happens when the default mode network loses control of the filters that normally control how much sensory information comes in and where it goes. There is also a dramatic increase in connectivity between different parts of the brain that don't normally exist. As you can see from the picture, there are way more connections between different parts of the brain when someone has taken a psychedelic medicine. So in other words, the psychedelic medicine is theoretically working in two ways. First, it's decreasing the control of the default mode network. And it's increasing all these other connections in the brain. In other words, it's helping perhaps to disintegrate the faulty circuit, the circuit that has potentially been causing chronic dizziness, chronic pain, depression, anxiety, and it's giving the brain more connections to work with. The way that I've heard this described in some literature is that instead of the brain having its normal spotlight and moving around in an organized way to shine its light on something, you have the lantern effect. In other words, there's just this big amount of information now coming into the brain and being processed in creative ways that it doesn't normally process them. So to sum this up, psychedelic medicines offer this flexibility and connectedness that ultimately lead to a rapid increase in neuroplasticity that we don't normally have access to when we are not taking psychedelic medications. And based on everything we talked about in this video and everything you already know from my channel, it makes so much sense that this would hold great promise for people like you who are suffering from neural circuit issues like chronic dizziness or chronic pain. Chronic pain research is just starting now, but I am incredibly optimistic that the results are going to be significant and that there will be opportunities in the future for people with chronic dizziness to also participate in studies to determine if other neuroplastic conditions are also helped by psychedelic assisted therapy. One important thing to note here is that that flexibility and connectedness lasts as long as the psychedelic does. 
So in other words, it is very important, and this has been shown in many of these studies that are ongoing now and that have already been published, that there is a critical component of an integration process. In other words, that the person who is undergoing treatment with the compound also goes through psychotherapy or other integrative counseling to help strengthen those new connections that have been made and make sure that the brain doesn't just default back to the old one once the experience is over. Now, I wish I could give you actionable information based on what I just told you, but what I can tell you is that I've had two clients who have gone through ketamine-assisted therapy. For both of these clients, I think that the psychedelics contributed significantly to their progress and helped accelerate their progress. It wasn't the only component of their treatment that mattered, but it was a major component that helped them get better. So in conclusion, I'm really hoping that psychedelic therapy becomes more readily available and that we have more capacity to study neuroplastic conditions like chronic dizziness, because from what I've seen and also based on the theory behind it, I'm very optimistic that it's going to be helpful. So I hope that was interesting for you guys. Of course, I'm a lay person, so I will be more than happy to answer whatever questions you have, but I'm hoping to one day also have someone who specializes in psychedelics on my channel so we can talk about it more thoroughly. Again, looking forward to your thoughts on this and if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you soon.